In this video, I'm gonna be talking about seed numbers in Diffusion B and how you can utilize those to kind of really create some fun and unique images. So if you're new to this Diffusion B, it's a standalone application you can download and run locally on your machine. So you can go to the GitHub address, which I will have a link to uh, in the description below. And you, if you've never done this before, it will bring you to this little home page here. This will load in a second. And you click on the latest releases. So right now it's 1.5.2, but they are dropping a brand new one in a couple of weeks with the implementation of safe tensors. Because a lot of people have been asking about those, so that's exciting for y'all. I've been checking out the beta and it's been amazing. But you click on the newest releases, and from there you'll see the new one available. Download whatever one you prefer for your particular machine. And it's literally a double click on the installer, drag and drop into your applications, and boom, you're good to go. Or you can also Google diffusionb.com and it will give you the other options to download it from here. And it kind of gives you a breakdown of what's like the functions and how it's, you know, run locally and all that good stuff. Also, check out the Discord because there's always information and updates and really useful tips and tricks. And just a heads up, it is not a bot server, so it's not like mid journey or any of the other ones where you put in a prompt so the, you can always tell who the new, new folks are because they're always trying to prompt and it's kind of funny like yo this isn't a bot server this is a, a standalone app but feel free to ask questions here anyway download the application install it so once you have that installed you can start generating images with different prompts there's a ton of places you can go to find your prompts you can go to uh, civet ai to find different models and uh, i've covered that before in my channel so what, what's a seed number? Like, what, what's the importance of it? So every time we generate an image, it's gonna randomize a brand new seed number. A seed number essentially is a set of values generated with each image. It's like a unique receipt. That's the best way I can kind of think about it. So uh, say I wanted to run like a, a batch size of like 100 images or something. So it's gonna run all 100 images within that batch you'll have the seed number, right? So it's gonna be like a blanket number. It's gonna cover all, all the images within that uh, batch. So I can recreate these images, which I'll do in a second here, with a different art style. And it's essentially gonna kind of mimic the poses or whatever's in this image itself in that different style. So whatever model you're using, I can switch that over and recreate these uh, poses in that style, essentially. Uh, there's different ways you can go by doing this using like image to image and uh, control net and stuff but like the seed number will kind of recreate this it'll make sense when I do this in a second but <clears throat> you can also with a little math and I'll show you an, another really cool app in a second that makes it so much easier but originally how you would do it with a little math uh, wizardry here <laughs> the M the generated seed number that's created with this batch so for this example say I wanted to recreate this fifth image and like kind of start from there uh, so you would take your seed number, so in this case, it's the 11285. And then, so it's the fifth image here, right? So you would do a little math, so it'd be the five minus one. I know this sucks and I'll show you the easier way to do this after, but five minus one, right? So that would give me four. So you, the seed number plus four, because you're, you're, it'll all make sense in a second here times one two three four and that would give you the seed number of you know sixteen two two one so say I want to recreate the eighth image in this set and like kind of start a brand new uh, set of these numbers from the eighth image so same idea so it'd be one two three four five six seven eight right so you do eight minus one so that give you seven right so then you would do the seed number plus the seven times one, two, three, four, that would give you 19, or sorry, one, nine, nine, two, three, or something like that. So it took a little math to figure out how that's utilized. And here's an example of how I was able to do that. So I, I recreated a brand new batch starting from the eighth uh, number here doing that same math, right? So this would be the seed number if I did all that math correctly. So again, that's the seed number for this batch. That's this thing here. Plus the number I'm trying to get. So, it, oh, sorry, the number I was trying to get was eight. So it'd be eight minus one. I have to do the minus one. 
Let me, I'm, I'll try to re-explain this a lot of times because I know it's really stupid and confusing. And after I show you how to do it this other way, you're going to be like, what the hell? <laughs> so, again, if I'm trying to recreate the batch starting from here, I want the eighth number, right? So it would be 8 minus 1 will give me 7. So it's the seed number plus 7, right, times 1, 2, 3, 4. And that gives me the seed number for this particular image to start from. I know that's annoying and so many users are complaining about how the hell do I find this, you know, seed number. And thankfully, someone out there in the interwebs, someone created this really fun app called Breadboard. Breadboard is essentially a really, really detailed search engine for stable diffusion and a bunch of fun stuff. So I'll have the link to Breadboard in the description below as well. But essentially, it allows you to have so much more information about the image and, and thankfully, like, they really break this down super, super simple as to how it works, what you can utilize it with. For the example they have here, you can use it with automatic 1111, invoke AI, diffusion B. And it just kind of gives you such, such an easy way to figure out, uh, it shows you even like animated drag, you know, how this all functions, which I love. Uh, but yeah, it gives you all like the metadata and everything involved with an image. So say you want to go back and recreate a specific image. You don't remember what model it was. It'll tell you that information. It'll tell you what uh, uh, seed number you use. It'll tell you the sampler, how many steps were used and all that information that you would require. All within one really simple, simple uh, UI interface. So you just follow like literally step by step. What you want to download it to is it for an Intel Mac, uh, you know, for the uh, ARM 64 CPU Mac there. And I think there's a few other options on there, but yeah, you drag and drop install, and then you run this little patch file, which will open up a terminal. And then from there, you put in your password for your computer and allow it to do its thing. It'll install, install the application and once you run it, it's going to prompt you to look for the files or like where the files are stored. And it usually has all the folders by default available at the bottom. You'll toggle which ones you want. And then once you run it, uh, it's going to sync with everything in your library. So depending on how many images you have, it, should, it might take a little minute, but it makes it so much easier. So if I wanted to find the seed number for this one, instead of having to do that math, I'll go into breadboard and click on the image and boom, in less than like a second, I have everything I need from here. So it shows me uh, the steps used, the, the uh, scale used there, the seed number I would require, um, the application it was used in there, the size of the actual image, uh, the specific model that was used, like all my information is there in seconds. So I can literally recreate the same image Instead of having to do all that math and all that little pain in the butt little stuff you had to do before, find the seed number, copy the seed number, go back into Diffusion B, and then I can keep the same prompt and everything I had. I will just switch the seed number over to that one that was in the uh, breadboard and hit generate. So depending on if you have a bunch of applications running, this might take a little longer. Um, I don't have a whole lot of things open right now, so it's going to take less than a minute to generate this image um, and if I wasn't running my screen recording in the browser and stuff it'd probably be even faster than the 30 something seconds that this normally would take so fun fun stuff so yeah we're almost done generating the image but you'll see that instead of having to run from this whole thing here you know if I want to run all these steps it's gonna start from this image and move forward so I'm gonna let us do its thing here it's almost done three more seconds here and we should see the exact same image recreated boom so as you can see that's the image starting from this whole batch because this is a specific <laughs> seed number associated with that image and it's going to continue running the files from this seed number so I'm gonna let this go a little further so you can kind of see what I mean but yeah so and I'll run the original batch with that same seed number with a different art style. So you can also see like how you can recreate the same images in different art styles and how seeds can be very, very important in creating your artwork. I'm gonna copy the seed number over for the original batch here. So I'm gonna 
copy that over, boom. Go back into my uh, information under options, paste the seed number, and then I'm gonna switch it over to one of my custom models. All right, so now I have it switched into one of my custom models. I'm gonna let that run and we'll see how this actually recreates that image. This is the original art that was created with just a default model. And then this is one with a custom model. You can kind of see the same similar poses, you know, when it's like a close up versus like a, you know, a half, uh, like a semi wide shot there, whatever. And it's kind of keeping the overall form there. So this is just like a head and shoulders shot, head and shoulder shot. So if I go to another model, same idea. So it's keeping the overall form, uh, like a general pose there. So this person has like a little head dilly bob there, like the original, so on and so forth. Another art style, uh, same thing. Another art style, same thing. Same kind of poses, same headwear, same pose, same headwear, and so on and so forth. So you see, you can kind of create generally the same kind of poses and uh, stuff with different art styles, different models, using the same seed number and then same concept here. So if I had this image I loved that was created using this model, I can take this seed number that's associated with this image and start a brand new batch with this specific seed number and kind of go from there. But anyway, hopefully this was kind of a little bit more insight on how seed numbers can be utilized, how you can find them, and an uh, easier way again using Breadboard and Diffusion B to kind of find all the, the model number, seed number, all the settings and stuff that you will use for your images. Alright y'all, as always be sure to like and subscribe and I'll talk to you soon with some more fun art stuff.